Okay, so today's video is going to be on Markov chains, which is a topic that's first brought up in a third year, at least in my school, a third year probability course, which is kind of ridiculous because you can learn this thing at any age, okay? The 99% of the content you can understand with having no academic degree. And so this is for those people that, uh, that you know, have maybe haven't been in school for a while or planning on going to school later and are interested in this, or people that are just learning about this in school and want a quick primer. So in less than 10 minutes, I'm going to tell you why you care about a Markov chain and 99% of the important information about them. Okay, so why do you care about them? Well, they're useful for predicting events. So in this example, we're actually going to predict the daily weather. All right, so in our example, we're going to have three different states, three different possible weather states. That is either rainy, could be rainy today, or it could be foggy today, or it could be sunny today, okay? And uh, you can fight me if you want that you can be in a rainy state and a sunny state in one day in real life, sure you can. This is just a contrived example to show we're predicting the weather. It is either rainy today and, and not foggy and not sunny, or it is foggy today and not rainy, not sunny, or, fog or sunny today and not rainy, not foggy. Okay, you are always in one of these three states. Now, we're going to use this Markov chain to predict the weather, essentially. So, from each of these states, say that we are in the sunny state right now. So this little X is gonna mark where we are. So if we're in the sunny state right now, to the, tomorrow, we're trying to predict tomorrow's weather. Tomorrow, it could either be rainy or foggy, or it could also be sunny again tomorrow. There's no reason we can't just wrap around to the same state. Say that uh, our little X or us, we moved over to the rainy state. Okay, so the next day was rainy. So it's now we'll treat it as today again. Today it is rainy, and tomorrow it could be either foggy or sunny or rainy again. Say that our little X moved over to the foggy state. All right, so again, we could either be foggy again, it could be rainy again the next day, or it could be sunny the next day. Now we've drawn all of the possible different transitions. There's gonna be nine arrows because we have three states. And for each of those states, you could go to any of the other states. So three times three would equal nine. We'd have nine different possible transitions from one day to the next. Now that fully explains the chain part, okay? So these are Markov chains. A chain is basically you, you're bouncing between states. That, that, that's all that means. Is you're in one state of the weather, for example, or you're in a rainy state, the chain would be, oh, you go to sunny, you go to foggy, you go to foggy, you go to sunny, you go to rainy, and so on. I just explained like a, a week of weather in five seconds. So that explains the chain. Now to explain the Markov part, well, we're gonna have to talk about probability a little bit. So don't be scared of the probability conversation. It's actually quite simple. At least I'll try to explain it in a simple way. So since we're in, say, the foggy state right now, our X is still here, well, then we're going to take either this arrow or this arrow or this arrow. We don't know which one, but there is actually a probability of each of them occurring. Now, to assign probabilities to these, we would just have the probability of something here. I'm going to leave it open for now because I'm going to fill it in later. Okay, so we're going to have these probabilities. Now, what actually are they? Well, to use the notation, this probability in the middle is going to be the probability of R given F. Okay, and that means the probability of going to the rainy state, the probability of the next state being rainy, given that the current state is foggy. That's that's this notation. I'm just going to write the, the other two before I write down the general notation for this. This would be the probability of going to the sunny state, given that we're in the foggy state. And this is the final one is going to be the probability of going back to the foggy state, given that we're already currently in the foggy state. So to explain this uh, notation more generally, well, we, we're actually writing short forms here for something else. So if I let t equal basically 
the day. Okay, the date, the day number. So the first day it would be, well, I'm not saying like you start up Monday or whatever necessarily. I'm saying the first day that you choose to use this model, then day, time t would be, at that time would be one. So the first day, time t is just whatever day it currently is. So t equals the day number. And then so t plus one is going to be the next day. So then I'll let st equal the weather weather at time t. Okay, so for example, if t was one, that'd be the first day, then we'd care about predicting st plus one or s2, which be, would be the weather at the next day. And we do that given the current information that we have. And so st plus one would be this, and st would be this. So if I basically have a short form, so the probability, if I, if I look at this one in particular, the probability of st plus one, this is the probability of st plus one, the next day is equal to the sunny state, given that the current state, the current weather was foggy. Okay, it's just a short form for saying the next day, the next day's weather is this, so the probability that the next day's weather is this, given that the current state is actually this foggy state. Okay, that's the notation. And this actually, believe it or not, explains the Markov property, because note what I didn't write was I didn't bother to write all the other information. I'm only looking at st plus one based off of st. You know, you could have uh, st, given that st minus one, or the, the day before that, was actually equal to whatever it happened to be. So like, maybe it was rainy that day, and so on. You could have st minus two was actually equal to foggy, if that's what it was. All right, so we're trying to predict this next state except we only need to do that based off of this current state. All of that other information in a Markov chain is completely irrelevant. And that's the Markov part. So it's a chain because we bounce around in these states based off of these probabilities. And this Markov part is because we only care about the current state. So if we were to actually assign some probabilities to this value, then I'm going to erase a lot of this notation stuff just to illustrate the problem. Oops. Okay, so each of these probabilities are, all the arrows are just the probability of going to that next state, given that we're currently in the, the, the previous state, but that's all that matters. We only care about what was what we're currently in. Okay, so say that this happened to be 0 0.3, 0 0.2, and what does this last value have to be over here? This has to be 0 0.5, because we have to transition to one of the other states to, to have a proper probability distribution, they have to sum to one. So if we're in the sunny state, then 20% of the time, we're gonna transition to the rainy state. 50% of the time, we're gonna transition to the foggy state and 30% of the time we're going to transition back to the sunny state. And so this is how we can actually predict the weather, is if you know what state we're in, and then you know the probability of all of the other states, well then I'll, I can just say, well I give you a 50% chance that tomorrow is foggy, and I, I give you a 20% chance that the, the tomorrow's weather is rainy. And this is actually what weather people do to forecast this thing, is some people model this as a Markov chain. And similarly, we could apply, we, we could find out the probabilities for, or if we knew the probabilities, then maybe we had something like this. Okay, and I did that quickly. It's believe me that I made them sum to one so that they are proper probability distribution. So then no matter whatever whatever state we were in, then we can predict the probability of the next state. So 
Hopefully that made sense. Let me know in the comments below if you liked it. Please give me a thumbs up and a subscribe. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Bye-bye.